Hi gamers, I'm Cyber Settler, and today we are playing Space Engineers. So today we are uh, showing the first uh, use case for the Eagle Transporter, and the use case is the um, ore prospection. So what prospection means is that we are looking for certain uh, minerals or um, you know va valuable uh, ore uh, resources. And we are doing this with the uh, Eagle Transporter and the uh, Prospection module. And uh, here we can see the Prospection module already attached. If you have been following my videos, I made a small update uh, showing how to uh, attach the Eagle Transporter to the module. And now I, I would like to, well, f the first thing to get out of the way um, is uh, why um, we are using the Eagle Transporter to, for the prospection, uh, why this module. So the, the prospection involves uh, uh, sensing with um, an ore sensor and uh, the advantage because I have ore sensors also in the in the small ships uh, as you can see uh, here you see but these uh, small um, sensors they have a very limited um, distance so if I uh, look for the sensors um, the, uh, well, the ore, ore detector are called. Uh, in this particular case, they have a range. Well, we can change it from 25 meters to 50 meters. So this is uh, for the small one. And for our big ore sensor here, um, it's, um, let's see, it's far greater than that. The ore detector has 150 meters. So this gives uh, a really um, big advantage over um, finding the minerals you you're looking for. And since um, the ore detector is so big, then um, it makes sense to, to use a, a big uh, ship like the Eagle Transporter. So that is one thing. So the other thing I want to clarify is uh, how do we um, do this prospection. So prospection basically is uh, consists of roaming around with a ship, like flying the ship uh, in a uh, lowest possible altitude. So you can uh, detect the ores. You have a, a greater chance of finding the ores that are in the ground and uh, yeah, so that that would mean that you you need to spend time flying, and this is a fuel-consuming activity. So this uh, then um, brings me to the to the next um, issue, or or a reason why uh, we use the Eagle Transporter and, and and the reasons behind its design is because uh, it's designed to. Um, yeah, to fly for uh, certain distances, uh, sparing fuel, and I will explain uh, shortly what what this uh, how it's done. You see that the Eagle Transporter has two uh, like three uh, groups of thrusters. One is the maneuvering thrusters. Uh, these are these ion thrusters that you you see in the pods. They are only located in the pods. And they are facing like uh, different directions. Well, all the all axes, right? Up, down, uh, left, right, front, and back. Then there are the lift thrusters. These are the ones used to keep the the the, the vessel at certain uh, altitude. And these are uh, located in the pods, but also in the in the body of the of the ship. And they're hydrogen thrusters, and we have a total of eight: one in each pod, and then uh, four in the in the body. And lastly, um, we have the impulse thrusters. They are located at the back, 
and they're also hydrogen thrusters. So the impulse thrusters are meant uh, to, um, as the name says, to, to give the, the, the ship an impulse uh, forward uh, for traveling. So there are two modes uh, uh, in which you can fly in, in Space Engineers. You, you have the flight assist and uh, without flight assist. These are the two modes. In flight assist mode, what happens is that the thrusters tend to um, keep the vessel stationary. So a, any a, at any time when uh, we have um, when we we move the the ship, then um, immediately the thrusters will automatically will react to to stop the ship. So. If you want to move for a certain length, you have to keep um, activating the thrusters to do that. And this is this is um, fuel intensive, um, so this is the downside. But the but the upside is that you have control over the ship, like you you don't fall off because um, especially if you are in a in a gravity field, uh, then it's. Um, the, the, the flight assist give you um, a good control of the ship um, and the other mode is this uh, without flight assist this is the like the free mode and in this case um, uh, you are following like the ship follows the Newtonian physics like it will um, keep the um, the w once the, you activate a thruster the vessel tends to keep its velocity in that direction so but also of course you're subject to the gravity field and then the ship also tends to fall down and but this uh, the, the advantage is that once you you activate a thruster you know you don't have to keep activating it you can you can like have these short bursts and the ship will continue uh, in that direction moving um, as a at, at a constant velocity so this, uh, these are the things we, uh, we have to take uh, in mind uh, to understand how, this, uh, how the roaming will work. Because what I do is that I try to um, have the best of both worlds. Like one thing is uh, to have control over the ship. Um, but, and, and, but at the same time, save fuel and the way i do this is that i will um have the flight assist on all the time but i will deactivate or activate certain thrusters so when traveling i will deactivate the maneuvering thrusters so the maneuvering thrusters are the only ones that are facing uh, forward as you can see the, the the lift thrusters are not facing forward or the impulse thrusters are not facing forward for so what I would do is that I will keep the lift thrusters on to so the flight assist will uh, try to keep the altitude of the of the vessel and I will keep the impulse thrusters on and activate them in, at intervals to move the ship forward uh, but since the maneuvering thrusters are not on the flight assist cannot kick them in to to like to try to slow down the ship so this will um the effect will be that we will keep like a, a constant um speed uh, at a certain level over the ground this is the idea so and with that out of the way i will show you uh, more in detail um what the um, prospector module is um, like so i have uh, of course the connector and the and the merge blocks this is our standard for it's like a standard configuration for all the the or most of the uh, eagle transporter modules i have then the the the, the connector connected to a cargo container and then we have also this um, small setup that I did with a, sm a small battery connected to um, a rotor with a small head um, because the big battery uh, consumes too much resources to build 
it, it requires 80 um, battery uh, like these power cells and this one only requires uh, uh, 20 uh, sorry 20 20 no uh, let me see I don't, I, I don't remember right now how much I think it's uh, no sorry it's two only two wow but you know that's that's a big improvement I think it's only two if I were to build the the battery yeah that that one well this is the the, the small but the other one is the smallest one let's see because now I yeah right only two the one that requires 20 is the like th this is also for the medium ship but it's not that one it's like the very small one and the reason I have this battery Fuel is low. because um, we um, well, the, the module is not attached to the Eagle transporter. Uh, it will require power to to keep like the connector on or to activate the the, the other mechanisms that we have in the in the Eagle transporter. The, sorry, the other mechanism we have in the module. So this is the reason of this battery. So w the other mechanism uh, are this um, uh, is this hinge here. We have a hinge connected to a piston, connected to a drill. So this is uh, the reason for this. That w w while we are prospecting, we could um, find ourselves uh, like wanting to to prepare the site to to take a um, a sample of the ore or to prepare the site for further uh, drilling uh, and mining so this is the reason we have this uh, drill here and the battery helps to activate these things while it's not connected to the main ship so yeah I, I think that it would be good if we could have smaller batteries for the big ships Currently, the, the only uh, possibility is this really big ship. So, and that's it. That's basically the 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 uh, prospect prospection module. So let's um, we should uh, we should get on with it. Um, the first thing we could do is that we could we could uh, put the the drill to the test and mine some ice currently i i don't have ice in the ship so yeah well this is um i have um now uh, added more things to the ship like this uh, survival kit and this um, uh, small pan button panel that helps me control everything and this cockpit is uh, really a, a small compact comp cockpit well it's uh, it's not the smallest uh, or the most compact you can get but it's the it's, it's a really small consider it's a cost like a custom cockpit right but I will change. I will change the command module. I will um, upgrade it. So let's uh, see. Let's um, get the all the the systems on. We have seventy six percent of um, hydrogen and. Here we go. So I'm not using like this uh, third person view so that you know. Um, to be like more re realistic. It's more like a simulation. So we have to do uh, the things with uh, cameras. So um, 
to to give you a, a a demonstration of how this uh, roaming will work without with we have the flight assist on and we turn off the the maneuvering thrusters and then we go forward so you see here that the that the ship tends to keep its altitude right but the the only the the thrusters um only the lift thrusters and the impulse thrusters are activated so if we want to stop we just have to activate the maneuvering thrusters and what we are going to do so you see that the ride is very smooth right the ride is very smooth and here i can see like all these um, you can see there at the bottom we see the the different uh, ores that it's detecting right like gold ice silicon stuff like that so this is this is um this is very convenient like uh, if we want to change direction we have to um, activate the thrusters again and well th this is a way to do it w with, with with this maneuver what we do is that we we come to a stop so if you don't want to stop then you have to deactivate flight assist and turn on the maneuvering thrusters to give a, another let's try that we could try that so we turn the, the flight assist off And you see that you have to keep an eye on the on the this artificial horizon because um, you see in the with the artificial horizon you can see the the speed right you can see the 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 speed uh, vector wh where is it heading I would like to. Um, If we want we want to go down we just turn off the 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 flight assist and immediately this will shut down the 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 lift thrusters and we go down this is a this is a, a way to 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 descend in a in a control way without the need to activate like we are using the gravity we're using the gravity to help us um, lose um, altitude, and we are not consuming uh, energy because otherwise we would have to do it with the maneuvering thrusters. Also, uh, take in, into account that the maneuvering thrusters are um, ion thrusters. They are not so powerful as the hydrogen thrusters. But they are meant for like um, close space maneuvers. So now let's uh, let's see where we are. Um, yeah, there's some ice there. I would like to. There's a camera in the drill, close to the drill. There it is. And probably it will be better. Yeah, to. To move the ship a little bit and now i will um deploy the the drill i want to drill some ice so probably we are um still too too high but we will descend shortly so i am um i activated the hinge so the drill should be coming down let's balance the ship a little bit so there's the drill it's already down and we can also extend
extend the 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 piston if we want well currently it's it's set to a, a low altitude to a, um sorry a, a, a a low um a small um distance it's not that far okay so we can activate the, the drill and there we are we're drilling now So you see that the, that the ship is really stable, even though we are we are carrying this uh, module, uh, the, the the prospector module that has a considerable weight, but the ship is powerful enough. Okay, I think that's enough for now. We can now um, retract the drill and So we can activate the, the, the um, generators. Currently, I have it. I have them deactivated. So yes, because these these things consume um, energy. So I have them here in my hotbar to activate them and deactivate them as um, needed. Especially the the gyroscopes, they um, consume a lot of energy. So let's see we got some some ice yes well that's a lot of ice right ah even the drill got got some ice that that means that we wow we exceeded all the um, ah we exceeded the, the the prospector module um cargo capacity because the, the prospector module can carry um, or in the connect in the container the connector and the drill but that's because the I think currently the the connector is not active so we can fix that by um, activating it here that should do it yes now the ice should be um, in our in our generator and one uh, one other thing uh, the just to explain a little bit about the eagle transporter it has these airlocks so um, Currently, I have uh, um, an air vent here. Well, two air vents. This one that is inactive right now, that you can see that it's, it's, uh, it has this red um, signal, it's inactive because the room is already pressurized. Well, it's, um, it's press it's, the pressure is low. Okay, but uh, if I, here I can turn it on. And it should pressurize the yeah so you can see there that um, it's pressurizing and the reason to turn it off is because um, once I I get certain pressure here uh, also this one should be off uh, let's turn that one off 
the reason is that uh, since um, we have um, once we have this room pressurized then we can use the airlock uh, with a with, uh, like in an efficient in a efficient way um, by turning the the vent off so there's certain uh, pressure and uh, air here once we open the, the door we get into the airlock and we close it again and you can see that this vent here is all the time depressurizing and this vent is connected to this other vent that is all the time pressurizing but it's not connected to the rest of the of the ship so this is how uh, you can make uh, um, an airlock and you can like um, spare um, oxygen because the the air is all the time re being recycled once i open the door here this this uh, room is already um, there's a vacuum in it okay so that's the uh, the eagle transporter first use case uh, prospecting um, minerals and i i hope you find uh, this video helpful and in further um, episodes we will be showing other modules with other use cases this will be um, a series um, and i hope to see you in the next one so this is Cyber Settler signing off.